I'm here with Bill Pettit. He's the president of Merrill Gardens, one of the largest privately owned senior housing companies in the country. And uh, Bill, it's a pleasure to have you with me. Mer Merrill Gardens survived the Great Recession in, in, I would say, pretty good shape. Um, what was the hardest thing to overcome during those two to three years? I think in some, in some respects, Steve, uh, one of the hardest things for us as a firm was uh, watching the seniors go through a lot of the uncertainties and uneasiness created by the recession. You know, it seems to it seems to me that it started out pretty simple. We had uh, we had a real um, significant problem with real estate values and. The seniors were able to kind of absorb that. I mean, it, it certainly hit them hard with the impact of, of real loss of equity. And there was a point in time where the seniors that we dealt with during that period of time and I held on and they kept deferring, thinking that real estate values had come back uh, because it represented a significant portion of their, of, uh, their net worth. But, you know, then it, it rolled into uh, kind of two other financial areas for them that, that no one really expected because no one expected the duration and the severity of that recession. And, and it hit them first and foremost uh, after the real estate collapse, it hit them in their fixed income investments. You know, here pre-recession, they're, they're picking up four and five percent on their CDs or, or treasury uh, investments and then those all rolled and when they rolled they didn't roll to three and a half percent they rolled to one percent or less and so in that case then they went through not only watching this collapse in their net worth on real estate equity but then it hit them in in real terms in terms of uh, you know 70 80 percent loss of cash flow out of the fixed income investments and then on top of that, as they moved, in some cases, into dividend-paying stocks, then they got hit with the volatility in the financial markets uh, over Europe and other segments. Not to mention the stock market crashing by 50%. Yeah. Yeah, and so all of that, for us and our team, was probably probably harder to watch them go through. In our case, we were, you know, we've always been pretty conservative, so we weren't having any difficulty with with uh, the operations of the company. Um, we never had any layoffs. Uh, in fact, we continued to develop through, through the recession. Um, sure, we had some impact on occupancies. We saw our occupancies pre-recession go from an average of 95, 96% to, I think at the trough, we had 89%. Um, and now it's back at 94. So, you know, we're in solid, financial position in our firm if we're, you know, anywhere in that high 80% occupancy range. So we didn't have any financial challenges. I think more than anything else, it was the challenge for a lot of our, our team members watching our residents who they care a lot about, you know, going through what they were going through. Did you, as a result of the uh, recession, did you change any of your development strategies? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we wound up during the recession uh, we only developed one building a year, whereas realistically we probably would have done two or three uh, from that standpoint. Uh, but we cut back and we deferred uh, some projects which we later picked up to develop, uh, which are now complete. Um, but in terms of the type of building we had on tap to build, we basically built what we had planned uh, pre-recession. Uh, some of the, what we're doing now post recession is a little different, but uh, yeah, I want to ask you. I mean, have you post recession? Are you have you changed the number of units uh, per building? Have you changed the the size of the units and the, the mix of IL, AL, and memory care? That's a good question. Uh, the answer to the first couple is no. Uh, we haven't changed the size of our buildings, and we have not changed the size of the units uh, from that standpoint. Uh, and we can talk about, about why, but uh, one of the things we also have done, which is a little different than a lot in the industry, is we typically will build a building between 100 and 150 or 70 units, 
but we, our model has always been to license all the units in the building. So when seniors come to live with us, we don't have segregated care. So if they come to live with us and they want a two bedroom or a one bedroom or a studio, uh, they can select that. And when they need care, we just give it to them in their, in their apartment. Uh, and that's been that's been kind of our style. It's worked very well over a couple of decades, and uh, and we believe, in our view, that's that's a good way to provide care for seniors. So we're not even changing the mix of units now. What's interesting is that post recession, we are seeing far more seniors coming to us older, uh, and with uh, within a much closer time frame for a need for services, if, if not already in need of services. And uh, I believe, at least it's my thesis, that a lot of that is a function of the deferral that was going on by these independent seniors who had made up their mind to come to senior housing. But because of the uncertainties created by the recession, kept deferring and deferring and deferring. It got older and older. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, pre-recession, we would typically see an independent senior for three years with us before they needed services, and now we're seeing independent seniors coming to us, but sometimes either in immediate need of services, even though they don't think they do, or sometimes within six months to a year versus the three years pre-recession. So. Since the recession, um, and the recession technically has been over for a few years, um, have development costs started to go up, or are they still? <laughs> We're just starting to see the, the uh, I think, the tip of that iceberg. Uh, the impact of the recession on construction jobs and on subcontractors was so severe that even though the recession technically has been over for a couple of years, uh, it's kind of hard to tell them that because they went through that grinding process for their firms of, of laying off significant numbers of, uh, of their staff to deal with, uh, with the collapse of development. And so they've been very reluctant to staff up until they've been more confident that they have a good book of business ahead of them. And, you know, there was that, also that lag on the, on the finance and capital side where even though the recession was over, you couldn't tell the banks that uh, if you were using traditional bank uh, financing. And so there was, uh, there, there was a lot of time in there after 2009, uh, a good 24 months, when even if you went to a bank with a project, uh, which has been our traditional source of uh, financing for development, they were a little uh, a little skittish, you know, change of credit policy, the lag of the effect on the commercial real estate portfolios that they had financed. It was it was challenging, I think, for a while. And you you have a very close relationship with healthcare REIT, uh, really more on your mature property side. Uh, for your development, um, who who's financing the, the construction? Well, uh, it's commercial banks. Uh, we've for uh, for 20 years had some very strong relationships uh, with uh, some of the some of the stronger banks um, who did well during the recession, and and also had deep relationships that they supported with with customers like us. And so, uh, U.S. Bank, Bank of America, uh, PNC out of Pittsburgh, all have been rock solid in providing. Uh, construction financing for us. Uh, at the depth of the recession, we really were pretty much uh, with Bank of America. Uh, and we worked through with them their underwriting changes that they needed to accommodate financing during the, uh, uh, during the height of the recession. But uh, we always had it, and uh, that's nice. Good. Now, China's been a hot topic uh, in senior living these days. Uh, can you give me a little update on it? Because you, 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 Merrill Gardens and you have been kind of a pioneer in uh, <laughs> looking into China. Can you give us a little update on what you're doing over there? Sure. Uh, China is a fascinating uh, challenge uh, and opportunity. And 
I've often said that we've been over there now full time for two years. We've got an office, uh, we're commencing management operations, uh, and we've been building relationships for the last 24 months. But it is, I mean, basically, it's, you know, you take our aging challenges with the number of seniors we have in the U.S. that are aging, and you multiply it times 10, and that gets to China. And, and then you look at where China is in caring for seniors. Uh, and they are two decades behind us in that context. So you get this this wave of of seniors coming through with China with improved medical care, uh, like here in the U.S. And you've got a government that realizes something has to be done to relieve those pressures. And uh, and so it's it's both a challenge and an opportunity. Uh, there are going to be. In our view, there are going to be significant differences with how senior housing and care take hold in China uh, from where we are in the U.S. There are also going to be similarities. I mean, I could take the script for what is evolving over in China and almost, almost roll it back to where we were in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Settling on a model of what the effective form of housing is going to be, settle, settling on a model of what the most desired services are going to be. Desired in the sense that they have real benefit, and desired in the sense that Chinese families are willing to pay for it, uh, is going to be pretty significant. And then you take the seniors themselves, and they are different. You know, I, if you think about it in the context of how we change lives in senior housing today, uh, for the seniors that live with us. It basically comes to about five principal elements. One is nutrition, because a lot of U.S. seniors have, uh, don't have good control or discipline with respect to how they eat, what they eat, uh, as, they, as they tend to, to migrate to an age where, where they're not just taking care of themselves the way they might have as younger adults. Um, and that leads to fitness, which is the other element. You know, you take nutrition, you take, you take fitness, and those are two significant elements that help determine the quality of your life as you, as you age. Uh, and then, um, you know, then you get into a couple of other elements that are, that even we don't recognize the depth of opportunity in senior housing today on, but we talk about it and we're getting there. And that's brain fitness. You know, how we, how we keep them thinking and active and, uh, and stimulated, you know, as they, as they risk becoming more sedentary as they, as they age. So you've got nutrition, you've got physical fitness, you've got brain fitness. One of the singular elements that we bring to seniors uh, is socialization. So many of our seniors today wind up self-isolating in their own home as they age. That their socialization becomes the telephone and, and it becomes watching TV. Uh, and it's natural. I mean, they, it's not as easy to walk. Their eyesight is not as good. But there's no reason why they can't still socialize. And so between nutrition, physical fitness, brain fitness, socialization, the last one is really uh, disease management, you know, and that's the care portion of it. But all five of those are so instrumental. And then you take that, what we do to change lives here in the U.S., and you take that to China, and you don't have the nutritional challenges in China for seniors because their diets have tended to be uh, probably healthier diets mm -hmm. in many respects. You don't really, in most cases, have the fitness challenges for seniors in, in China because many of them have had a, um, many of them have had a life filled with, with physical exercise and, uh, and today as you drive around any of the Chinese cities, you'll see seniors out on, uh, out in parks and seniors in street corners doing Tai Chi or, or right. other forms of exercise. So, you know, they don't need the nutrition as much and they don't need, need the fitness as much. They can use and will benefit from finding ways to, to continue to maintain their, their uh, mental fitness in that context and, 
and they are, and they recognize that they benefit from socialization. So, as care evolves, at least the initial care models that that the early adapters will will use there, a lot of it is going to be around the care side, right. you know, and uh, and also giving families a way to deal with this kind of cultural stress in China of having families feel uh, obligated uh, to care for their seniors and torn with the challenges, cultural challenges in China from you know the, the one child, one family uh, cultural uh, evolution that occurred uh, a couple decades ago and then really more meaningful in some ways is the relocation of all of these families from agricultural environments where it was the family plus it was also the village that cared for seniors into these new mega cities and the challenges of having grandchildren that are off to work and have to work, uh, challenges of less room and less space uh, and the challenges of of caring for seniors in this kind of urban environment that is evolving over there. And so there are solutions. The solutions will still involve, in many cases, families. But in many cases, I think the earlier solutions will, will be solutions brought by other, other foreign cultures who have been invited into China to help adapt what they do culturally with seniors to, to China. So it would be a mistake to go pick up a, a, a United States or North American senior care facility and just transport it to China and think that you're going to have all the same policies, all the same practices, and you'll have a, a, you know, a great business model over there. It has to be adapted to the reality of the marketplace. Well, a lot of challenges, but it's uh, obviously, as you said, it's uh, ten, 10 times larger. So, uh, well, good luck over there, and thanks for the update. Thanks.